So, today uh, we're going to talk about something completely different, because I have seen that on a lot of Today I Learned Reddit posts, uh, there was the history.com site linked, or yes, linked, <laughs> or something, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, I've then just checked it out, and I think it is a pretty cool website. Um, I don't know how well researched it is, this is not something that I have particularly uh, had a look at. Um, but we're going to go through an article from this site. And it is also really well designed, which is something that I always appreciate and I always want to point out and I always want to underline because uh, it is not normal. It is not something that you're seeing every single day, something uh, and stuff, which is uh, pretty top notch. I enjoy that. So today we're going to talk about Jamestown. I don't know what Jamestown is, so I just completely don't know anything about this article, but it sounds pretty interesting and therefore I'm willing to go through it and also just uh, read it essentially. What was life like in Jamestown? Life in the early 1600s at Jamestown considered mainly of danger, hardship, diseases and death. Sounds good. The first settler at the English settlement in Jamestown, Virginia, hoped to forge new lives away from England, but life in the early 1600s at Jamestown consisted mainly of danger, hardship and disease and death. All of the early settlers in 1607 were men and boys including laborers, carpenters, bricklayers and blacksmiths, a barber, a tailor, a manson and a preacher. Within weeks, uh, weeks uh, they built a basic fortification to protect themselves against attacks from local Bowhanton Indians. The Bow or Bowhattan's reception of the settlers was mixed. Some welcomed them, while others assaulted them. Since there were, and this is a quote, since there were often several different tribes in a given area, it was not strange for different na native groups to view the Europeans as potential allies against enemies, says Stephen Lesses, or Lesses, a historian and PhD candidate at Fordham University. Great diversity among native groups meant that rarely was there a widespread cooperation against European settlements. I see. You know, it's. I thought that it is always like um, portrayed as if just there was always war and they always hated each other and stuff like that. And but it's apparently not the case. As the roughly a hundred colonists settled in, they soon realized angry Indians were the last, uh, were the least of their problems. They were pathetically unprepared for forging a new colony. Daily life soon revolved around survival as starvation and disease ravaged them. Only about 38 settlers survived the first year. Fuck. 70% died. Three ships lay or lie at anchor on the, ver <laughs> on the river as early settlers carried lumber and raised the walls of the stock stockade fort at James Jamestown, Virginia, the first permanent English settlement in America at around 1610. The winter of 1609 was disastrous and crude healthcare didn't help. Disastrous. I know it's not pronounced the correct way, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway. In January 1608, more settlers arrived, including the first two women and the first physician. According to Lessis or Lessis, the English government at the time had a vested or vested interest in settlers traveling to the Americas because this was a rough time in English history. The government concluded that England was overpopulated and wanted a way to get rid of the excess population. And so let's just uh, get them to some other place. Of course, good idea. During the winter of 1609, relations between the colonists and the Indians worsened and the Indians laid siege to Jamestown during a terrible terrible famine. To survive, the colonists ate anything and everything they could, including, according to recently discovered and disputed archaeological evidence, some dead corpses of other settlers. Only 60 colonists survived this starving time. There's not much writing about specific remedies physicians used in Jamestown to treat their sick and dying patients. Bloodletting is documented as well as the use of herbal remedies. Local Native American medicine and uh, medic medicinal practitioners likely had an influence on treatments used, but as evidenced by the massive number of settlers who died, these early medicines were only marginally successful at the best. Bloodletting, by the way, is another article, um, which seems to be something that's pretty interesting. I haven't had a look at it. Anyway, the marriage of John Rolf and Pocahontas created stability. Is Pocahontas actually indeed a real thing? We'll see. Despite the arrival of more colonists and attempts to, imp to improve conditions at Jamestown, it wasn't until 1612 when colonist John Rolfe introduced tobacco to the settlement that the colony became profitable. In 1613, English colonists captured the Bohanton princess Pocahontas. Fuck. In 1614, she converted to Christianity and married John Rolfe, which led to a period of peace between the Powhatan 
and to Jamestown Sellers. In 1619, a representative general assembly was established to make laws and help maintain order in the Fletching colony. Women showed real grit in the early Jamestown colony. Between 1620 and 1622, well over 100 women arrived in Jamestown. Some were purchased by owned by un, un, unwitch colonists as wives. Others were in true but indentured servants who endured harsh conditions working in the tobacco fields as well as physical and sexual abuse. England hoped the women would help men create ties to the community and make them less likely to abdon the colony. Once an indentured woman paid her debt, she would likely marry, but many were still responsible for working the fields as well as handling domestic household duties. Women were much less submissive in Jamestown than in England, however, and often thought for the rights and those of their kids. At first, some men appreciated their wives' contributions so much that they requested the women be given land of their own. This generosity didn't last, however. <laughs> By the mid-1700s, uh, or mid-17th century, as the man's primary concern turned from mass survival to conciliating wealth and land, the General Assembly passed in uh, passed a law in 1662 stating that argumentative wives could be dunked underwater. What the fuck? And now we wonder why um, women have, I don't know, a bad time around just men or some shit? I don't know, this is just complete bullshit. In 1619, the Dutch introduced the first captured Africans to America, planting the seeds of a slavery system that evolved into a nightmare of abuse and cruelty that would ultimately divide the nation. Africans arrived in Jamestown as indentured servants. By 1619, the tobacco was king and daily life for almost everyone in Jamestown revolved around producing and selling tobacco. In August, the first Africans arrived as indentured servants, although they were not officially slaves and might eventually gain their freedom. They would... Uh, they'd been kidnapped from their homeland and forced to live a hard life of servitude. servitude. The presence opened the door for Virginia to accept the institution of slavery and eventually replaced African indentured servants with African slaves. The next decades in Jamestown brought periods of war and peace with the Indians. More and more colonists arrived, spread out and created new towns and plantations. In 1624, Virginia became a royal colony. Fire, disease, famine and Indian attacks remained, but according to Lesses, one other important problem was the increasingly stratified society. As time went on, original settlers had snatched up all the quality land and new settlers were finding less opportunity to become independent farmers on their own land. That resulted, this resulted in a small class of rich landowners and a large class of landless or small farmers. By 1699, there were around 60,000 people in the Virginia colony, including about 6,000 African slaves. Jamestown had started a tradition of slavery that would endure in America for generations. And this article is by Annette McDermott. I hope that I've pronounced it correctly, probably not. But it is an amazingly interesting piece. Fuck. It really is. But I, I didn't, by the way, know that Pocahontas is a real thing. And I have talked to a sibling of mine... And we've been debating, like, you know, is Pocahontas real? Is Mulan, if you just notice, Disney character as well, if she's, she's also real? But apparently Pocahontas is real. Very, very, very interestingly. It's pretty interesting that I'm finding this in this article. It's, it kind of feels like I'm meant to do this. So after now, if you're only interested in this, also podcast-wise, um, I'm now going to talk about just some stuff and that I, you know, my thoughts on this. So if you're only here for just having an audio version of this amazing article, then please um, feel free to just, uh, I don't know, step away or what not. Very interesting. Um, and also very interesting to see that Virginia was kind of the introduction to slavery for the American continent, which I know is, is the, the dumbest shit that, but I don't know. Uh, history is history and it is what it is. I hope that this is not going to be uh, um, repeated as so many things in history did repeat themselves. But, um, but yeah, very interesting. But I actually do want to just check out Pocahontas. I've seen that there is another article on that as well. Oh, it's just some sort of a biography, which is also quite long. But, you know, I'm going to start because I'm just interested in it. Oh, quick facts. Name Pocahontas. Birth date, 1595. Death date, 1670. What? Place of birth, 
uh, Vero Mokomoko, Virginia, place of death, Gravesend, England, United Kingdom, A.K. Rebecca Wolf, uh, Mataoka Amonut. She died aged five, twenty-two years old. I do wonder though if this was a quote-unquote normal age to die. I kind of don't think so. But when did she marry then? With fucking 12 or something. Well, anyway. Pocahontas, later known as Rebecca uh, Rolf, was a Native American who assisted English colonists during the first years in Virginia. Pocahontas was a Powhatan Native American woman known for her involvement with English colon colonial settlement at Jamestown, Virginia, in a well-known historical anecdote. She saved the life of Englishman John Smith by placing her head upon his own at the moment of his execution. By placing her head... Oh! Pocahontas later married a colon... What? Later? Didn't she die then? She saved the life of an Englishman John Smith by placing her head upon his own at the moment of his execution. His... Her head... A pun. What does a pun mean? Doesn't this a bath or some shit? On. Pocahontas later married a colonist, changed her name to Rebecca Rolf, and died while visiting England in 1617. Pocahontas was the daughter of Poe Hayton, the leader of an alliance of, oh, of about 30 Algonquin speaking groups and petty chiefdoms in Tidewater, Virginia, known as Tsenakomaka. Her mother's identity is unknown. I do wonder how people know that, or how we know that. Historians uh, have estimated Pocahontas' birth year as around 1595, based on the 1608 account of Captain John Smith in a true rela uh, relation of Virginia Smith. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. There's a bit more I'm going to definitely link down this article in the description, also the other article that I went through just before, in case uh, you do want to check it out as well. But yeah, I think I'm going to end the episode there, so... So thank you very much for just staying here with me. I hope that I've been able to present it in a relative cool way, in a way that is worth going through and worth listening to, essentially, as well. But yeah, I wish you the best health, health happiness, and all success, and also hope that you're going to find yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy basically means just being a nice person and also being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty cool thing. But yeah, three other questions that I have for you are, why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is also a pretty cool thing. Another question that I'm having for you is, what could you essentially say to somebody else that is really going to change their life? His or her, whomever, life. Think about it, please, because I think it is an amazing thing that we all can do. And yeah. With that being said, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. So bye-bye. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And I'll see you.